and we are live. I'm here with Mark Walsh, really excited. We're going to talk about purpose. Uh, it's a topic that I actually really enjoy talking about. I just don't get to talk about it often enough. And I'm really glad Mark is doing a summit about purpose called the Purpose Black Belt, which is really cool. And uh, he invited me to be on a panel discussion. And I just, I wanted to, you know, I'm grateful that he said, oh, well, I want to, why don't we schedule a call anyway? We'll just, you and I talk about purpose. So excited. Mark, welcome. Uh, for those who don't know you, let me just say a bit. Um, Mark is the founder of Embodiment Unlimited, now it's called, right? Um, and the creator of the Embodiment Conference, which is one of the largest online conferences in history, I'm sure. With the largest, uh, the largest, <laughs> yeah. half a million, uh, uh, you know, participants and over a thousand speakers. Uh, I was one of them. Grateful to be part of that. Um, anyway, now Mark is just launching some really cool programs. The, the previous one he just launched was called Ethical Marketing, and this coming one is called Purpose Black Belt. Uh, fun stuff, Mark. Let's let's chat. Let's talk about purpose. It's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. Like I, today's my day off. I'm, I, I'd messed up and not had a day off over the weekend because this is one of the dangers of purpose. You just want to work all the time. And I was like, shit, I need a day off. And Tuesday was the only possibility. But this was the one thing I said, don't cancel that. I want to talk to George. It's always yeah. fun talking to George. So yeah, I'm in yeah. Um, Tulum, Mexico. There's tropical rain happening outside. Wow. And um, I've been at the gym and the dentist today. I've been healthy happy good to chat definitely on purpose myself so Man. um yeah it, you know i i saw an instagram post you made today um is it okay if i mention it I mention whatever it's yeah. out there I've said um, it now it's too late be down <laughs> <laughs> no that's great no it's really it's, it's a good post uh you, you wrote that you know i think one thing's i'm just gonna i'm just gonna share my screen if that's okay because you know might as well bring some some stuff on on screen here um, you wrote that I think one thing that's been hugely underestimated in the various lockdowns oh, yeah. is that many who do contribute to the world through their work are feeling lacking. And this is almost worse than death. There's, that's why there's so much ill health and suicide for people after redundancy or retirement. As meaning is not a nice to have, it's essential. I think it shows both the importance of purpose and the dangers of, of having just one way of fulfilling it. This, of course, needs to be balanced with other health issues, but the real, the real meaning issues of not allowing many to work does need to be considered. I love that. Yeah. And um, my, my, my response to that was, you know, like once you have basic food, you have safety, like you're, you're not afraid of like dying any moment, which I know is actually a, a real issue these days, but um, uh, basic health, safety, health, uh, you know, uh, shelter. Beyond that, it's like you need to feel appreciated. You need to feel of use to society. And it's like, if you think about it, what is one way that combines all of it? Combines feeling appreciated and useful and able to pay the bills purposeful work, <laughs> you know, right? It's like, that's why it's so important for us to yeah. to figure this out, but but can can you? I know I know it's made a di big difference in your life. Um, finding purpose, how did it happen? Yeah, and I was always kind of a purpose fundamentalist, like at heart. Like I, what do, um, what do you mean by that? So yeah, so when I was a kid, I looked around at people doing jobs they hated, and I saw that it made them unhappy and unwell, and in many sort of bad effects. And I just went, "Fuck that! I'm not doing that." Like it was really obvious to me as a kid, and maybe it was because I had. Um, confrontations with death that most kids don't you know my um, cousin who I was raised with as a brother killed himself because he regarded his life as meaningless and I kind of and he was my hero you know he's like my older brother my and I, I remember rest in peace Jason if you're out there listening to the podcast in the sky and um, I remember thinking wow it's really important that your life means something because people will literally kill themselves if it doesn't of course and I, it was intolerable to me to do stuff that wasn't meaningful uh, maybe it's part of my ADHD or whatever, but at school, I found it very hard to do work that wasn't meaningful even at school. People said, yeah, but then you'll get to, 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 to A-levels, which is like high school, and then you'll get to university. And the hoops never really meant anything to me because I, I realized that was my life. And the hoops never end, actually. And the hoops never end because as soon as I get to university, it's like, oh, but you could do an MA, you know. And I went, by the time I got to university, I was just like, fuck this, this is a joke. You know, this is a trick. This is a, this is a racket. 
and I, you know, the hoops keep going, right? And there's some great comedy of it over the years on this, you know, and then it's your mortgage, then it's your retirement, and then you retire and you're all of a sudden you're too old to do anything. And, you know, you're, you're 80 years old and you've, you've, you've got pancreatic cancer. And, you know, now you've got, you can live, which doesn't make sense to me. I always demanded to live immediately. So I always just didn't really have much choice. I always um, pursued what was meaningful to me. And originally that was Aikido. And, um, you know, I, first time I walked into an Aikido dojo at university, I was, it just resonated. Like my whole system lit up. I was like, okay, this is where I should be. You know, and later on, there was, a, there was another moment where I realized it wasn't quite the martial art. It was what was within the martial art. So it was like a refinement, which is often how so I, was, I was walking across what's called the green line in Cyprus, which splits North and South Cyprus. And I was part of a peace project using Aikido, which for me was the coolest thing ever. And there was Israelis and Palestinians and Iraq, Iraqis and Americans and Serbs. And, you know, there was uh, Greeks and Turks. And I would I'd kind of volunteered to help this project. And they said, OK, Mark, you know your way around. Take the group across the border. And it was sort of my job to get everyone across this border, which was quite you know, it was tense. Uh, it wasn't necessarily a certain thing. And if you imagine sort of old buildings that haven't been touched for since 30 years ago, and they've got rocket holes in them. And, you know, I'm walking through this area, and I just had this moment of like, this is exactly what I should be doing, where I should be with these people. And, and interestingly, two weeks later, I'd lost that thread, as it were, and I was, you know, back to drinking alcoholically in just this awful situation in a house that's covered in dog shit. And the contrast between the two, the meaningful and the not meaningful, was so huge. I just went, I cannot let that happen again. And I just followed that thread, the red thread of meaning through peace projects and war zones and through starting a business wow. and the conference to what I do now. And to me now, it's like a tangible physical thing. And if you're even slightly off it, I don't sleep well. I don't eat well. I don't feel good if I'm even slightly off it. So, and, and we all get drawn off it because we have ego. We have an ego and we have temptation to use a very old Christian sort of terminology, you know, Jesus in the desert, you get tempted with money and power and sex yeah. and things. And that can take us off it. And because we're human, we do that. Or we just sort of get a bit lost or life gets a bit hard. So, you know, like in COVID, a lot of people go into a trauma response and start playing it safe. Yeah. And when you're playing it safe, what you're really, what you're, which is a, you know, let's just focus on, the, like you said, the hierarchy needs, the survival needs, actually that, that ends in disaster. So a yeah. um, bit of a long yeah. rant there, George, but no, uh, this, that's, that's my story. Amazing. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know about most of it. Um, so it's really cool for me to hear it. Um, it's, it, it kind of gave me the chills uh, how similar we, we were as kids because I also, I was constantly questioning through school, like why, why, the, why the heck are we learning this math concept? Like, when am I going to use this? Right. <laughs> it's like I mean, anything, anything after basic algebra was like, <laughs> why trigonometry? Why, what, what's the point? Oh, because university. Well, university now, what am I going to study in university? Oh, you got to study so you go to law school. Okay, let's go to law school. So no, you can make money, right? <laughs> right. That pay what? Make money to do what? Pay off the law school loans. Right? <laughs> that's that, right. It doesn't make sense. I think George Carlin, that's the comedian who did a piece on yeah. this. I thought it was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I mean, and, and but you're absolutely right. It's like uh, well said, the temptations in the desert. It's like, so why do so many people go decade after decade not living, not pursuing their purpose? Is because they want to look good to their family. Well, now they have a family to support. Actually, a lot of people get stuck, right? Because now they're like, well, I, I can't, I can't just I always, do my thing. I always challenge people on that one. I'm like, is the example you want to give to your kids not doing what you love? Do you want to drag your half corpse, meaningless fucking shell of an existence back home to your children? Do you want to make your kids the excuse that you didn't do what you love? And people will say, oh, you wouldn't understand. You don't have kids. And it's like, yeah, but I've got other things. We all have other things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, that's a big excuse. Oh, and people man. get get trapped and i've been coaching people for years on this purpose black belt originally was a live course uh, and then and we did it uh, i think five years ago and then the, the second time and then i took a bit of time off for the first embodiment conference yeah, yeah. and then and then people just kept eating me when's the next one when's the next one you're doing it again and i was like well life courses are really hard for me to like with the chaos and travel so we, we made it into an evergreen course which yes. also, also makes it cheaper yes. totally, um, totally. or 
accessible. Yeah. So I mean, it's better for our business, it's better for other people. So we made it evergreen this time, but I've been coaching people for ages on this. So I've heard all the excuses and I've heard all the, you know, the really good reasons, you know, when people are in trauma responses and they find it hard to feel into it, when people are disembodied, so they, they lose that body radar that I've been very lucky to have through embodied practice. Uh, when they don't have people around them who are meaningful, like, my peers are people like you, George, like people like you are people who I hang out with. It would be weird. And let's say we're sitting in a coffee shop in San Francisco. If, if you're on purpose and I'm not, it just feels weird. Whereas <laughs> like all my friends are like you, they're doing what they love and yeah. they, they're doing what yeah. is meaningful to them. Yeah. You know, what you're good at, what you love, what contributes. There's yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's kind of start getting to that. But uh, I want to, I want to just invite everyone who is watching the video, you have the ability to comment below. And I oh, really cool. would be interested to know who is watching this. And have you had that kind of experience of, I can't live a life without purpose? Like, what's your story? Like, I'm really curious. Like Mark told his story. My story is that, yeah, I grew up, like I said, I was questioning through school, but really just even looking around, um, I guess my, you know, part of it is my, my dad started his own business. So I grew up with an entrepreneurial dad. I think that was part of uh -huh. it, uh -huh. right? It's like, it's very helpful. Like, oh, well, of course you can, you know, pave your own way or go your own way instead of yeah, working yeah, for, yeah. for somebody else. So I think uh, early on that was with him. And plus we immigrated when I was six years old, we immigrated to another country, to the United States. So that also George, it's like immigrant club, you know, from an Irish immigrant family, <laughs> immigrants do it better, man. That's just all there is to it. Yeah. Because it shows you that some, you know, something big change is possible right. when your family moved to a whole another country. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that, that is why I think there's so many That's good businesses that come point. out of immigrant populations. Yeah, it's like you, you, you have to make it in a, in a foreign environment that is sometimes hostile, you know, toward, towards you. Um, well, so anyway, please comment below. I'd, I'd love to know, those of you who are watching this, what is your story of how you, like, why? why what, what's your big why? Like, why, why, why does it? So I want to ask you, Mark, how did you then, how do you, I know you're going to go into this and in, in we're going to talk about this in the summit. The course itself has, by the way, can I just, since this is authentic, I'm actually authentically excited about the course. So I, I before I, we go into more, I just want to show people real quick what you put together um, just for like two minutes. Oh, cool. uh, this this course. This <laughs> no, I know. I know. Kane, Kane, no, Kane no, actually, I haven't. All my Kane, team did this. Kane, so Kane actually so emailed me. And said, George, oh, can you can you give me your feedback on the sales page? So, so I I I read this today, and I'm like, this is really cool. Like, you got this. Know yourself. Hey, this is not off the press. I I I mean, I gave them the content, but they put it the the web guys. They, and they put it together. This together. is this yeah. is this is the first look actually, mm -hmm. and and it's going to be even better. It's going to you know it's it's. I'm can I can I talk about those belts? Because this might be interesting. Yeah, totally. To totally. Like, a white belt, which I don't really do, is like I'm completely lost. I have no okay. idea what I'm doing with my life. Okay. Right. That we could call that stage one if people want to put it yeah. in the Facebook chat. Stage yeah. two is like, okay, I, I kind of getting to know myself. I've done some personal growth, but I want to fine tune my purpose. Yeah. And there's a sort of caveat here in the in the modern in the situation we find ourselves in, where people have either had their practical situations rearranged by COVID. Yeah. Uh, which is a gigantic existential death meditation. So that's fantastic uh, for for purpose. <laughs> Or they've had their like existential kind of doubt. They've had sort of, you know, they've had time or, you yeah. know, or they've had a change of circumstance, which has given them a chance to reflect. So that's sort of orange, yellow slash orange belt. That's the sort of like people that want to deepen or clarify purpose or who have lost it a bit and they want to come back to it, maybe because of external circumstances, maybe because of internal circumstances. And then the orange belt is kind of like, you know what your purpose is, you're just not doing it. Because a lot of people say, well, I know I want to be a yoga teacher or whatever. And I'm, you know, but why aren't you doing it? Right. Yeah. And then the brown belt is kind of like being around people, learning the marketing skills, kind of, you know, practical stuff, being inspired by people. And then they also black belt is doing it. You know, black belt doesn't mean you're an expert, black belt just means you're getting on with it. And obviously my Aikido background was a little bit inspired by this. Yeah, yeah. No, no kidding. It's so cool. Um, and I want to show people just like, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to this. Um I just really liked the outline as I was reading through it. I just want to at least show it on the screen so that people people can see it. If you want to pause, you can and, and just see what's what's here. But I just I love it. I mean, you you include everything from uh, you know questions to Taoist exercise. It's just awesome. Um, to, you know, the acceptance of death. That's a big one for for me actually. That's something I want to I'll, I'll talk about briefly. 
but um how to unfuck yourself <laughs> I, lo I love that <laughs> the walshism uh, not everyone's yeah. cup of tea but yeah as we know for bad niching you know you can't please everyone yeah how to discipline okay this is a really good one can, can we just touch on this for for, for, sure. for a second because sure. because um there's a maybe it's a misconception or it just hasn't been thought through like a lot of people think okay if you're if you're living a life of purpose you just do whatever you want it's kind of <laughs> like the sense of like like well actually no this is a real question for you mark like yeah, yeah. does it mean that you have this inner guidance to do like you know exactly what you're doing with your day and if you don't know what you're doing with your day, you should just wait until you know what you're doing with your day <laughs> okay so 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 this is like like a silly hippies version of Taoism, right okay. like i know like me you yeah. like Taoism, and i Taoism is sort of one of the perspectives that is useful for purpose so the three main perspectives that are implicit in most purpose work are sort of you know find the flow find what's harmonious with the universe there's a sort of Christian perspective, which most of the American teachers have, which is like, you know, God has a special chosen mission just for you. And even mm. if they're not religious, that's in there. And there's truth to that, you know, the Blues Brothers theory, you know, we're on a mission from God. And there's, that can be a kind of useful perspective, but it isn't always. And the way the Taoist one's not useful, if, if my pronunciation is shit, George, please tell me. No, no, it's perfect. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, um, the, the Taoist perspective is useful in that you find what's easeful, but it's also a trap in that that's not an excuse to just do what you feel like, because actually what you feel like is the sum of your habits most of the time. So like, unless you're like deeply tuned into your embodiment, what you feel like doing is eating chocolate and going and having a nap right? Which is pleasurable. <laughs> I mean, I like that. I'm not saying you should never do that. You know, I'm a big fan of those things, but it's, but it's also maybe not always helpful. So when people talk about discipline, I think there's a few things. So one, there's always things that are uncomfortable to do when following purpose and getting comfortable with discomfort. Martial arts are great for that. Breath work is great for that. Um, you know, talking to attractive people, you, you know, randomly is great for that. There's lots of ways to get comfortable with discomfort, but that's necessary. And that's a skill that you can get better at. The second piece um, uh, is discipline is really just remembering what you love. So, dis so discipline isn't like hitting yourself with a stick. Discipline is, is about reorientating to purpose. Like I'm super undisciplined and no one believes me when they say that, when I say that but I'm incredibly orientated to purpose. So I don't need discipline. Like, like I'm bad at discipline. I'm super ADHD, right? So discipline does not come naturally to me. However, because I'm so tuned into purpose, I don't need discipline. I don't have to, when my alarm clock doesn't, goes off, I want to get out of bed. So that's the sort of deeper take on discipline, I would say. And then sometimes, yeah, it's just about getting the fuck on with it and maybe hitting yourself with a stick briefly. Now, not too often, not too much. But it's, it's, it's this idea that finding purpose means you just get to like lounge around and do exactly what you feel like. I'd say the opposite. Purpose is a harsh mistress. Like if you look at artists who really follow their muse, I mean, that's brutal. Like, per, like the bigger problem is purpose will kill you. You know, you look at um, Muhammad Ali, you know, and then you know, his, his kind of brain injuries, or, you know, his, oh, no, his Parkinson's, but very likely influenced in his boxing, right? You look at many great people and, and they've been killed by their purpose. They've been burnt up and because the muse doesn't give a fuck about you. I mean, actually it's self-preservation. Once you're tuned into purpose is more the game. Like that's the other side of it. If you want sustainability and longevity in purpose is, is how very not to burn interesting. Out. I mean, the conference almost killed me. Yeah, and literally, my yeah. resting pulse was 115. Wow! After the wow. conference, wow! Like, I went to my doctor, and my doctor this said, is, "You need to rest now." This is so. It, this is fascinating because you've just basically turned the word discipline around. With it's usually about, all right, get up, go do stuff, go do the right things, go do you know, follow a schedule, whatever. And you're saying when you're tuned, in, well, first of all, step one get tuned into purpose, right? My Practice discipline is having a day off. Right. Discipline, <laughs> it's actually once you're really tuned in and on fire with purpose, the discipline is actually creating a structure that allows you <laughs> self preservation sustainably to actually activate and express your purpose in a way that it can be years or decades and not months burn out, you know, get sick of it, 
and go, go to a job where someone else provides the structure for you, where yeah. you can live someone else's purpose. Right? More or less. If, if you, you know, our culture really emphasizes striving, and this is where yeah. the sort of Taoist truth comes in, right? right. That too, you know, there's a way in which purpose is more like listening than shouting, right? It's a way in which it is more about tuning in. It is more about the flow, as it were, the deep listening. Yeah, so that's the Taoist truth, but then we have to be careful of the sort of mis the near enemies they call them in Buddhism. You know, yeah. that's the sort of as I said, the New Age hippie version of Taoism. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, the, you know, one thing I'll, I'll introduce to this, and uh, you probably talk about this in, in the course, and I'm sure the summit will have lots of very interesting conversation about about this stuff. It, like, like we've been talking about, okay, the day to day, like what is what am I supposed to do today? But I like to look at purpose. I mean, just stepping back a little bit, looking at the bigger picture, uh -huh. I, had, um, I had a mentor, this is uh, 15 or you know, 16 years ago, who he's passed now um, and probably listening to us here, who said, you know, he was from the more the kind of Christian background and he, he used the word calling, right? Because the, the word, you know, mm -hmm. purpose calling. And he said, you know, George, he, he's, he was telling me this at 80 some years old. He said, you know, what I've learned about calling is that you don't really understand it until you look back mm -hmm. and connect the dots and okay. realize, wow, that was my, that was my calling. And of course that therefore can inform what your next steps are, but it's like, sometimes we don't do that enough. It's like looking back and go, Oh, this is what life has brought me here. Like, well, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. it's like, what, what have been, you know, people can look at what their innate strengths are, what their upbringing is like your upbringing is not random and and even the the, the trauma right that happened right, right. to us is not it can be made meaningful when we say how can we use that to grow ourselves and to, to benefit others like what is the is there a through line that we could put together yeah right? yeah i mean we can't make life free from suffering unless we're enlightened right so what we can do is make that suffering worthwhile and that can be done during our life, but it can also be done after the event. And, you know, one interesting purpose question is, you know, was everything in my life, the good and the bad, if it was all a conspiracy to get me someplace, where would that place be? If it was all a conspiracy to give me a set of skills, I like conspiracy rather than God's plan, but you could do God's plan if you wanted. Um, you know, were it all a conspiracy to give me a certain set of skills? Like, for example, I used to write a lot of haiku and poetry, right? And at the time, people used to say, you're wasting your time. You know, what's the point in that? And other than the fact that it's, it's great to give to girlfriends, it really, you know, wasn't much point, but it's really helped me as a copywriter. Now, to read, especially haiku, because you have to be very precise and short, you know? So you don't know where things are going. Um, so that's an interesting question. The third perspective, so we've got the Taoist, the Christian, which is, you know, God has a special plan for you, which can be helpful. It can give you a sense of belief and, and you know, that, that externalizing can be helpful, is actually what I call the European existential perspective, which is just to choose. So, uh, so we've got listening to the flow of the universe, we've got the sort of special plan view, but we've also got, sometimes it's like marriage. Like, like, is my wife the most beautiful woman in the world? Yes, of course she is. You know, did God make her just for me and me for her? Of course, but also it was just a choice. Right, like there is a way yes. in which you can just pick a vocation, and just get the fuck on with it. And then, yeah. you know, we know this about marketing, about niching, or about just getting really, really good at something. Yes, you just pick one thing. Right. Now you have to have a talent for that thing. You have to enjoy that thing. Yes, right? Got, right. It's the sort of arranged marriage slightly, but it's not just yeah. a random marriage. But like you can right. just choose. And I, I chose embodiment. Now there's yes. other things I could have chosen, but that was That's right. that was a that was a choice. And I think once you, some, some people need that perspective rather than the perspective of deep listening and go with the flow, which is other people that are too willful. They need that perspective. It's a so really, the, yin, the yin and the yang. You could I that. really appreciate that you're bringing these perspectives because, or another way of looking at it, these are tools. These are tools you can use. Like at this time in your life, what would be more helpful? Do you, have you been hustling so much? Have you been just run, run, run? Yeah. And now you need to actually listen more? <sighs> right? Have you, been, have you been getting a calling but ignoring it? 
right? Sometimes that's true. Like there's, there's been something and you just kept ignoring it. You could say that's God's plan or your higher self or your soul or whatever you want to say. Like, have you been ignoring it? Maybe you need to just follow it. Or, and maybe sometimes there's signs, right? Like, uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh, um, uh-huh. And, and what you just said here is, or maybe at this time you have several good options and you just need to choose <laughs> cool. and become really good at that option, knowing that you're going to learn a lot about yourself as you work. Right. As you as you take the path, as you, also, as you there's, walk. No, there's no perfect wife or husband or whatever you right. yeah. or, or career dolphin. Uh, yeah, there's no perfect career. Right. So it's like, of course, there's things, you know, you make that choice to commit and to marry. And it's, and it's in that in that reducing of options. Actually, there's true freedom. And, and I think that's difficult for our society to understand these days where we want, we want to do everything, you know. Um, so I think purpose is like that. As you say, for some people, it's just the blocks and barriers. You know, there's just getting out of their own head, their own inner critic. You know, my student Erica does stuff for women who are too nice. And, you know, she, she sort of sees the sort of gendered aspect to it. And the sort of, you know, how women are encouraged to be nice. And Erica you know, she really, yeah, yeah, she's great. She's great. I know she studied with you and she studied with me and now she's a colleague. Uh, she'll be joining me, I think, on some of the Purpose Day. Um, so, you know, she's taken that angle. And, and actually, we've, we've deliberately got two days. One of them is like the Mark Walsh show, right? Because, you know, it's my company, fuck you. And also I'm good at this, right? Yeah. But the second day is all like, like my friends who are great at this, like some of the best purpose coaches in the yeah. world, because it's so honestly, like my style is not for everyone and my style won't help everyone find purpose. Yeah. Right. Some people need a bit of a kick in the ass and some Walsh humor. Whereas yeah. other people, they were like Jamie Cato, my friend, Jamie. Yeah. Like I, 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 want, I want to show on the totally screen different. here. I want to show on the screen for, for those who are lucky enough to be watching or listening to this before uh, February 26th, you can actually join the Purpose Summit for free. Um, so be sure to check it out. I, I'm going to be part of it as part of a panel and I'm really excited and I'm excited to kind of listen uh, and watch the other things myself. If you're watching this or listening after February, you can still buy essentially buy the purpose summit by by joining the purpose black belt course and the purpose summit comes with it obviously the purpose black belt course has a lot of amazing content uh we we just went through uh, a couple of them i mean now there's brown belt we haven't even looked at and then black belt uh etc so um who else is coming let me see who else is going to be oh yeah 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 yeah. let me let me just aussie steve's been arranging this not me so Okay, so Rod Stryker, he's a big deal in yoga. Kathleen Booker, I feel inspired every time I talk to. She's got this like, um, almost like evangelical kind of soulful kind of Mm. access to spirituality. Um, Jamie Cato, he ex rock star, he did the film One Giant Leap. He's met more spiritual teachers than anyone I know. John Williams wrote a book on this called Screw Work, Let's Play. Uh, Alain Stefani is doing um, stuff around trauma. She was a big hit at the conference. Alain, everyone's in love with Alain. Yeah. Um, there's Erica uh, Chalky. <laughs> there's Erica, uh, Mr. Branch there. He does stuff particularly with uh, young black men. That's his calling. Awesome. Um, and he, he, you know, he's very passionate about that. Beautiful case study. Dylan um, Newcomb. I, I, I work with him sometimes on Focusmate. So lovely guy. Yeah. You know, Dylan from Focusmate. Yeah. yeah. He's, He's, I always say he's the, the world's second best embodiment teacher. Um, <laughs> no, let's, let's go join first. Let's go join first. He's an amazing teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, Mark, I, I, I know it's your day off, so I should let you go and actually have a day off. Uh, thank you. Thank you for um, doing this. Hey, are, are we still here? Are we still here? Mark, are you still here? Am I, did we lose connection? Did I lose connection? Oh, you're, you're back. Okay, cool, cool. Sit yeah. on my bed. Yeah, <laughs> Mark. Mark is Mark is in Tulum, Mexico, right now. Yeah, uh, you know, renting a place. So, anyway, I just want to say for those of you who are watching this, um, if you have enjoyed this conversation, if you want to go deeper and talk about purpose, understand the perspectives and apply it to your own uh, to your own life and to your own work relationships, etc. I hope you join us for the Purpose Summit if you can. If you can, if you're watching this later check out the Purpose Black Belt course, purposeblackbelt.com, just like it's spelled, purposeblackbelt.com. Mark, uh, any parting words of encouragement as we Mm, finish this conversation? What to say? Here's what I'd say. So I know a lot of people right now are a bit run down 
maybe you know because of lockdown they're not getting that co-regulation that community touch that we all need and crave for but not everyone but a lot of people are suffering and i would say that purpose can be an anchor and an energizer when the world is chaotic because it's orientating to your true north and that true north gives you energy gives you kindness gives you calm gives you so much so I would, I would think of reorientating to purpose, whether it's through the summit or reading John's book or, you know, whatever you want to do as a support during this time. That's the last thing I would just encourage people to, you know, if not through me, then through someone else to, to find that, that true north, that inner support. Yeah. And I think as more of us understand how to discover, embody purpose, we can help lots of other people do the same. But the, the beauty for me about everyone finding their own unique individual purpose is that it means we're less easily brainwashed. It means we're less easily put into agendas of hate or, you know, advertising, consumerism, things that are destroying our minds and the planet and everything else, because it just is so much more attractive to be orientated to purpose than someone else's agenda. It's really so, a good so, that, point. so that, so it's a, you know, for me, it also is, is a world changing thing as well as a life changing thing. It helps us to be a lot more focused, a lot less distracted, a lot less distractible. Right. So yeah, beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> lots of, lots of benefits. I, I'm inspired yet again. Thank George, so much, love Mark. talking with you, man. I always, always really enjoy it. You bring out the best in me. It's a yin and yang thing. I think yeah. you, bring, you bring out the best in me and I love talking with you. So any, anytime yeah. you want, you want me back, I'm happy to. Awesome. Definitely will. I better run. Thanks, man. All right, my man. Be well. Cheers. Bye-bye. Have a good day.